my next pick is actually an album that we reacted to. Like, I loved it immediately. Mm. Hi, I'm Archie. I'm Molly. And uh, today we're doing a little bit of a different video. Um, so if you're new to the channel, uh, thanks for checking us out. We usually do uh, album reactions. Mm -hmm. um, and for those people who kind of been following us, um, you're probably wondering like, what does Molly actually listen to? And um, you're probably wondering what the name F11 stands for. So it actually stands for February 11, which is our wedding anniversary. So today's our wedding anniversary. When you're watching this. When you're watching this. <laughs> so we thought for this one, we would do something different and we would talk about um, 11 of our favorite albums, mm -hmm. 11 of her favorite, then 11 of mine. It's not like necessarily my top 11 of all time. Some of them are in my, what would be my definite top 11. Yeah. But just 11 of my favorite albums that are like significant to me or impacted me. Yeah. In some way, I guess. Pretty much the same for me. Um, had a hard time yeah, compiling this so list. Yeah, it was so hard. <laughs> uh, you'll see that I only have a couple of hip hop albums actually on this list. So if you guys want like a hip hop album list, just let me know. I can possibly make one in the future. So yeah, so just to reiterate, these are our favorite albums. It's not because of like sales or legacy or anything like that. It's just what they mean to us. So. Mm -hmm. Let us know what your favorite albums are in the comment section. And recommend some songs. If you, yeah. Yeah. If I could just listen to a couple of songs, what would they be? Yeah. Feel free to talk about what it means to you also. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't like an album necessarily because it's like the best album in the entire world. You just love it because it means something to you. So yeah. feel free to have at it in the comments. You want to go first? Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. Okay. Just to preface, this is not necessarily in order. The first album I chose was Room on Fire by The Strokes. Solid pick, solid pick. Yeah, I just love The Strokes so much. Mm. They hold such a special place in my heart. I don't listen to them as much as I used to, um, but as a teenager, like the first time I heard them, I was like 16 years old, um, 15 or 16. Mm. And I heard them playing and it was Red Light. That was the first song I ever heard by them. And I loved it and I went home um, and I went on Spotify and I listened to it. I listened to the whole album. I was obsessed with it. I listened to the rest of their stuff. Completely, completely obsessed with them for so many years. They've impacted my life in like so many weird ways. <laughs> Like so many random ways. Yeah. Very important. I can attest to that. <laughs> very important <laughs> way. So in 2020, they released their first new album in seven years, which I was exceptionally excited about. So that had been since 2013. They had not released a new album. Um, and they released their first single from it, which was called At The Door. And the first time I heard it, I was like, what the hell is this? I was upset by that song. <laughs> I love it now. But at the time I was like, what the fuck is this? This is so bad. I listened to it once and I immediately took to Instagram. Yeah. And shared my disappointment on my story. Um, and you replied. Yeah. Because you were also disappointed with it. So we had already connected over film photography. Mm -hmm. And you already knew I liked the strokes because I had photos. So I had no choice but to <laughs> slide in your DMs. So you slid into my DMs to yeah. agree with my sentiment. And we spoke every day since. Yeah, damn. And that was February 11th, 2020, mm -hmm. that they released that song. We spoke every day. And two years later, we got married. Here we are. Here we are, yeah. thanks to the strokes. Shout out. Shout out to The Strokes. Shout out to The Strokes. Just my first ever favorite band. They've like changed the trajectory of my life so many times in random ways. Uh, got me a husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just such a special place in my heart. I love them. And that's my favorite album from them. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I will recommend a couple of songs. There's so many bangers. Whatever happened in 1251. Oh. I'm going to choose those as my favorites. My first pick is uh, from 1994 called Dummy by Portishead. So 
I remember as a kid just seeing the music video for Sour Times like on Much Music and I was like what the hell is this like <laughs> It, it was it was kind of like this film noir kind of vibe, but I can't remember when I actually just really dove into the to the entire album. But mm -hmm. it's just it's easily one of my favorite albums. I think it just it's such a weird combination of like R and B and hip hop, electronic it has like spaghetti western type influences, and the sampling on here like it's very hip hop, and they're the kind of like the pioneers of of trip hop, like the genre called trip hop, which is a combination of hip hop and electronica. It's it's a beautiful album. It's sad. It's sexy. It's depressing. It's it's everything. It has a lo-fi vibe to it. Um, the lyrics are amazing. They're heartbreaking. Uh, Beth Gibbons is the lead vocalist. Her vocals are beautiful. They're haunting. Just a great album to uh, to chill out to, mm -hmm. drive around at night. It does have a nighttime vibe. So that's that's uh, number 11. If I had to recommend two songs, I would say... Damn. I would say uh, Strangers and It Could Be Sweet. Those are my two oh, favorite songs. Oh, you love that song, It Could yeah, Be Sweet. Yeah, I play that all the time. Yeah, so. you do. Um, yeah, so that's my pick, Porter's Head Dummy. For the next album, for me, this is also just a representation of a band as a whole. Right. First of all, because I could not pick a favorite album, which I will explain. And second of all, the one I was going to pick as my favorite album as a representation. I know that you picked it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you could still talk about it, but... I'll talk about all okay. of them, but as sure. a representation of my love for this band, I have chosen Amnesiac by Radiohead. Nice. Oh, that was upside down, I think. Am <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Amnesiac by Radiohead. This album is slept on. First of all, I'll explain. I cannot pick a favorite Radiohead album. Yeah. Because I feel like it also changes all the time. Um, Radiohead as a band, I would, even though I feel an obligation and a loyalty to the Strokes, I would say Radiohead is my favorite band of all time. Wow. And I have made that decision as an adult. Because I always <laughs> liked Radiohead. Right. Like Creep, obviously. But. I really got into them in like my early 20s. I feel like since I got into them then, they've been so many things to me at so many parts of my yeah. life. They've like played a huge part in some huge, like important parts of my life, mm -hmm. horrible parts of my life, mm. happy parts of my life. It's another band we connected over. Right. I feel like Amnesiac is the underdog of Radiohead albums even though it has some weird songs it's just full of bangers yeah. and they're also underrated there's a, an amazing three song run you and his army i might be wrong and knives out yeah those that's are, an amazing three yeah, song yeah for run. sure it has a masterpiece in pyramid song that oh, is yeah. by far one of radio that's i think that's the best song best. on there dollars and cents hunting bears if you like brian eno mm -hmm. hunting bears good ambient it has it all. Life in a glass house. It's jazzy. Mm -hmm. The ending of it, it's just... <laughs> I'm quite passionate about this yeah, album. Yeah, it seems I, like it. I will defend this album until the Great. end of time. I would recommend Packed Like Sardines in a Crushed Tin Box and Pyramid Song. Pyramid Song is one of... It's just absolutely heartbreaking. It's a masterpiece. I, I love agree. it. I agree. Okay. Uh, my next choice is called Music for Nine Postcards by... Hiroshi Yoshimura. Um, I can never... Amazing pick. So this is what you would call like Japanese... I guess it's just a Japanese ambient album. Minimal ambient, yeah. yeah. It was released in 1982 originally and it was re-released in 2017. I think it was inspired a lot by like nature, um, architecture. And uh, I believe he made this for for an art gallery like mm. like music for um for an exhibition or something like this but people like people that visited the gallery really liked it this is such a peaceful album uh it's something that we listen to quite a bit um we listen to a lot of ambient music yeah. so I, I needed to pick at least one that we uh definitely listen to quite a bit we played this vinyl a lot um it's just so, a beautiful it's so album peaceful. it's peaceful it's, it's so good for like 
in the morning when you're drinking coffee yeah it's, or like uh, at night when you're relaxing it's such a beautiful album it's, it's so like gentle equal parts of like melancholy but also like kind of wistful yeah in some sense i guess there's um, a kind of like <clears throat> not coziness to it no like, totally it is cozy there's almost like a cheerfulness to and it and i would like i would even throw in the word like um healing it's a very healing mm -hmm. album like you know if you're feeling anxious or you've had a kind of like a busy day or rough day and yeah. just kind of want to chill out put this on play some video games look at your phone or whatever chill out in the dark <laughs> <laughs> whatever like That's whatever what helps you relax <laughs> yeah it's it's just an amazing i think it's an amazing piece of work the two songs i would recommend probably number two which is clouds and I would say view from my window. Yeah. So um, yeah, definitely check it out. So my third pick is an album that I think half of our subscribers have requested <laughs> I react to. Yeah. I wish I could hear this again for the first time. Yeah, me too. I would pay to hear this again for the first time. <laughs> my third album is House of Balloons by The Weeknd. Solid, solid. This album, is just banger central. It's just banger <laughs> after banger after banger. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. So I heard that for the first time in 2021. Oh. So here's the thing with The Weeknd. I feel like when he got big in the UK, I moved to France <laughs> and I didn't listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. So I kind of missed the whole like weekend thing. Okay. So the first time I really heard of The Weeknd was in 2020 when Blind and Lights came out. Mm. And like everyone was obsessed with it. Right. It was like on TikTok and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was the first time I'd ever heard The Weeknd. But yeah, the first time I actually listened to this one was when I moved into my new flat in 2021. And I listened to The Morning while I was painting my living room. I was like, holy shit, this song is so good. <laughs> and then I listened to the rest of the album and I wish so much I could just sit down and listen to it with headphones yeah. and appreciate it for the first time. Right. Because I feel like I really missed out, like, okay, I'm going to listen to this song, or I think I'll listen to this song, instead of listening to it all the way through as an experience. Mm -hmm. I just think this is such a good album. It yeah. reminds me of a strange period in my life, but just an amazing album, undeniable masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Yeah. That's funny because, like, I think a lot of people this isn't the first thing they've heard from the weekend. Like they've mm. heard all this pop stuff or, you know, whatever's on the radio or on, on TV or whatever. And then they go back and listen to this and then their minds are blown yeah. because it's, no it's, uh, it sounds completely different it, from it, what he sounds like now. It's so amazing. Yeah. And like the darkness of it, it's just fantastic. The production, mm -hmm. just the lyrics, the themes, yeah. it's so dark. It's just absolutely amazing. But the funny thing, as you know, with the weekend, is I don't listen to any of his other albums. <laughs> so I feel kind of like a fraud to maybe call this one of my favorite albums. But Why? it is. It is. It is. It's it's strongly in yeah. my top of all time. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So please stop asking me to <laughs> react to it because I can't and it hurts. What are your favorite songs on there? Oh, oh, The Morning. The Morning. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I should have known. The Morning, that's one of the greatest songs of all time. And then my second favorite would be Wicked Games, I think. Oh, I love yeah. that. My next pick is an album from 1994 also called Grace by Jeff Buckley. If you haven't heard of Jeff Buckley, I feel bad for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you probably heard um, Hallelujah. He does a cover of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. It's probably in a bunch of like TV dramas and, uh, <laughs> and movies, but um this reminds me of uh going to university i got into this album late by the way so i'm not gonna act like this album came out yeah it was university so it was probably uh early 2000s so i'm old by the way <laughs> but i used to listen to this like driving back and forth like from university it was just an album i was just obsessed i was obsessed with i mean as you can tell like it's just like it's a good looking dude on the cover you don't know what to expect you don't know what you're gonna listen to but just listen to the first song mojo pin and his voice is like it's incredible it's, if i could like if i was a singer and i could have anyone's voice it would be jeff buckley's it's it's so dynamic it's so full of emotion you just you just feel it in his words his his voice it's just immersive that way he's influenced like a lot of artists he's influenced people like john mayer um, tom york for instance oh. yeah it's just a beautiful album very 
heartbreaking. It's he's just a really talented guy. Unfortunately, he passed away at 27. But yeah, I would highly, highly recommend this album. Uh, if I had to pick two songs, if you could only listen to two songs on this album, I would say Last Goodbye and Lover You Should Have Come Over. But honestly, all of these are tense in my opinion. But maybe one day you could react to this. Oh yeah. I don't think you've listened to this. I haven't heard the whole thing. My next pick is actually an album that we reacted to. There were two albums I could have picked. I didn't want to pick more than one album from ones we had reacted to. Okay. So this album, I spoke about it in another video actually. As soon as we listened to this, like I loved it immediately. Mm. And it's been so long since that happened to me with an album. Wow. Yeah. Should I just reveal it now? Or well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My fourth pick, I believe, is uh, Atrocity Exhibition by Danny Byrne. Now, I already have this vinyl and we reacted to it only a few months ago. So much I love it. it just sometimes you just like connect to an album immediately. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was an absolute masterpiece. And like I said, when we reacted to Quaranta the other day, like as soon as we, as soon as we finished that video, I downloaded it. Mm -hmm. I listened to it all the way to Scotland and all the way back. <laughs> I can't get enough of this album. Wow. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Nice. The production, the like the story, the mm -hmm. wow, just an absolutely amazing album. My two favorite. Now this is a difficult one. <laughs> yeah. So I say my two favorite songs because b before I would have immediately said pneumonia and white lines. Mm -hmm. Those are my two favorite. <laughs> I'm gonna go with pneumonia and when it rain. Oh, nice. Why Not Rain is kind of like a recent favorite for me. I feel yeah. like I didn't listen to that as much. Like Pneumonia, I just play over and over yeah. and over again. I think that's so good. Um, but When It Rain, I was not giving it the attention it deserved. Mm. And now I can't stop listening to it. I love that about an album. When yeah. you like, you love certain songs and then you realize you're kind of like sleeping on another song and yeah. then you... Well, that's the way it works. Yeah. Cause you know, we only do like a first listen, but mm -hmm. you know, on subsequent listens, some songs like they kind of like sink to the bottom and yeah. some rise, to, rise the top. to the top i just i think it's so dark and vulnerable and funny yeah even though it's sad i just think it's an all-around like 10 out of 10 album perfect and such a long time since yeah. i've felt that way immediately nice. about an album so yeah that's a special album to me amazing yeah go watch our reactions uh to yeah. danny brown nobody's watching those man yeah come on <laughs> <laughs> damn those are her best reactions <laughs> so um for my next album i don't have the vinyl um the cd's in the car <laughs> um it's an album from 2002 called you forgot it in people by broken social scene Ooh. Um, so broken social scene is a uh, it's basically like a super group, like they're from Canada. Um, there's three core members and there's a bunch of like additional members from other bands like Stars, uh, Metric, um, Feist. So this, like I said, this album came out in 2002. I think at this time I was mostly listening to like R&B and hip hop. Like I grew up listening to R&B and hip hop and I was in university and I just kind of discovered this band, I think just through some looking through a magazine or something and it pretty much opened the door for um like indie music like for me and also kind of in a weird way made me a bit um i don't want to say patriotic but i started delving into like more canadian bands afterwards because the only canadian artists that i knew of were like whatever was on the radio and, and on tv so like you know avril lavigne and like Michael Bublé and, and Nickelback, <laughs> one of your favorites. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> anyway, like back to the album, it's just, it's a, it's a one of a kind album. It's a, it's creative. It's, it's just a mix of different genres. Like there's ambient, there's indie rock, there are ballads on there, there's instrumentals. You'll hear like three or four different lead vocalists. It's just like, I don't know. It's just like a wall of noise, but I don't want to say a wall of noise, but there's just so much going on, but it's it's just such a beautiful album. And it really paved the way for me personally to listen to bands like Death Cat for Cutie, The Shins. Oh, The Shins. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. like kind of those bands, Band of Horses, um, Fleet Foxes, 
just bands that I was really into like um, in the in the 2000s. They're they're amazing. I've seen them live like three or four times. I've seen them at the, I saw them at the airport once, <laughs> um, but I was too shy to to say anything. But um, but yeah, that that album just made a it was just very impactful for me personally. If I had to um, recommend two songs, it would be um, I'd have to think about this. Probably Lover Spit and um, Cause Equals Time. So go ahead and check that out. You Forgotten People by Broken Social Scene. Lover Spit is a beautiful song. It's an amazing song. That's such a beautiful song. Yeah. My next pick, I also, we don't have the vinyl. We do have the CD. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's Channel Orange by uh, Frank Ocean. Nice. Um, we do also have Blonde by Frank Ocean. Channel Orange has been one of my favorites, favorite albums um, for like over a decade. Yeah. So first of all, I got into it because of my brother. Mm. Um, I've taken so much of my music taste from my brother, actually. Wow. He um, does have great, uh, great musical he, taste. He's like the best in music. Yeah. So the thing with bands that Call, my brother, listens to is that when we lived together, he would listen to the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> and I would hate it. Yeah. So he listened to Channel Orange non-stop and I was so sick of hearing it. And then one day, at like the end of 2013 or something, 2014, I was shopping and I was like, hey, I recognize this song. I was like, it's fucking lost from Channel Orange. <laughs> then I was like, Loki, this is really catchy. <laughs> it's a great song. So then I was like, damn it. Cause uh, Colm had instilled yet another album in me. It's an amazing album. Yeah. And yeah, it really, it, it's held its spot as one of my favorite albums of all time mm. for like 10 years now. And yeah, I think it's an amazing, amazing album. I think he has the voice of an angel. So Channel Orange. Uh, if I recommended two songs, I would say Pyramids, which I think is an absolute masterpiece. And I'm gonna say Super Rich Kids. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a great song. Yeah. That I love is, that song. Yeah, I think yeah. it's underrated. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorites on there for sure. I guess for my next pick, so I'll give a, a little bit of background first. Um, I guess this would have been Again, I was around um, university days. I was doing a lot of like going back, listening to um, music that I might have missed. Um, but I was listening to a lot of like Soul Koreans. If you don't know who Soul Koreans are, it's a it's a collective that that included um, like The Roots, uh, Erica Badu, and all these all these artists. I was listening to a lot of like neo soul. My pick is Voodoo by D'Angelo. Still need to get the vinyl, but um, <laughs> I have the CD here. This shit is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is amazing. It's just dripping in soul. It's, I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's just an amazing album. Um, I guess it was uh, co-piloted by Questlove of The Roots. He's the drummer from The Roots. It sounds very, a little bit offbeat. And I think the inspiration there was Jay Dilla. So this was all like a band, um, all live instruments and Questlove played the drums as if it was Jay Dilla programming it, so it's a little bit offbeat. And it's just, the grooves on here are insane. Uh, it's super soulful. D'Angelo's voice, it just, it's amazing. I've been listening to this actually quite a bit recently, uh, just driving around. But, I don't know, it's it's super soulful. I know I've said that like nine times already. And I chose this because just to represent that time for me, it was a really important time for me as well as far as like music discovery. This is pretty much the pinnacle of soul music, in my opinion. So if I had to recommend two songs, um, obviously I'm gonna say Untitled, um, which is his biggest song. And probably, probably the first song, Playa Playa. Um, highly recommend it. Voodoo D'Angelo. My next pick, I know you have it. Because it wasn't there. Oh? Was the vinyl. So I know you have it there. Which one's that? Music has the right to children. Oh, from Boards of Canada. Yeah. I'll give you that. Now I was going to pick another one because I was like, okay, well Archie has this one, so I'll just pick another <laughs> one. But it's it's too good. This 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 is, in my opinion, this is their best album. This is an absolutely fantastic album. 
Alternatively, I was going to pick Geogaddy, but that's just slightly below, and I think it's kind of scary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's scary. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's low-key, it's, it's scary, yeah. it's weird. Um, so Geogaddy was a close a close second, but this, this is a perfect album. This is just, if you don't know Boards of Canada, um, they're electronic. Um, they're actually Scottish. Yeah, that was just pretty wild. Yeah, it's wild. I never think about that. They're Scottish, but they also lived in Canada for a time. Oh, wow. Just like me. Yeah, I love this album. You introduced me to Boards of yeah. Canada. And you introduced me to them because I like Aphex Twin so mm -hmm. much. I think as a default, when we're just like relaxing, the automatic choice to listen to is Boards of Canada. Or when I'm like doing something, like if I'm like editing or retouching, and I just need to concentrate. Yeah. Boards of Canada. So Music Has the Right to Children, I think is their best album. If I had to recommend songs, honestly, they're all, they're all so good. They're all such a vibe. I think I'm going to pick Aquarius because mm -hmm. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. And um, maybe, maybe Turquoise Hexagon song. Oh, <laughs> that was mine. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Well, I might as well. <laughs> so this is definitely one of my favorite albums. It was on the list. Um, it might even actually be my number one album of all mm. time. Um, but I say that about every album that I like. So yeah, this was released in 1998. Uh, it's not for everybody, for sure. It's very hypnotic. It's very um, psychedelic, I guess. And it has a very nostalgic vibe, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember when I first listened to this, it just kind of reminds me of like being in grade one and sitting cross-legged on the carpet and then watching like a film on a projector. Like that's the that's the vibe you get. Like you, you just feel like you're a kid. Um, some of the sounds you hear are very vintage. They sample a lot of like Sesame Street. Yeah and uh, just like twist it. They're you called. actually said to me that when you recommended them to me, you said they make you feel nostalgic for something that has never happened to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think like, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, it's just a very like vintage retro sound. They're called Boards of Canada. Um, for those who are not familiar, in Canada, there's a, it's kind of like a company called the National Film Board of Canada. And they used to uh, produce a lot of vignettes and short films. So I think they started off like in the 70s, 60s or 70s. 80s and I, I remember as a child seeing their little vignettes on tv and so they took that name and kind of have that same feel oh yeah so it has That's a nice description yeah so i used to listen to this quite a bit um back in the day i remember it was like studying to this and uh just chilling out it's um, so good for like studying yeah chilling out when you need <clears throat> something in the background right i mean i mean i'm a huge fan of like their other work as well mm -hmm. it's just this one was my introduction to to them and and now it, it's kind of taken a, a different life of its own because like or a different meaning i should say because uh now like we listen to it quite a bit it's one of our favorite albums together so um yeah turquoise hexagon sun is my favorite song on here but if i had to recommend two other ones i would say i like open the light oh yeah that's and, a good choice. i mean roji biv is the most popular one so we'll go with roji biv an honorable mansion to geo gaddy by boards of canada but I don't think that's the first album you should listen to from Boards of Canada. I think, yeah. I think you need to be... That's a fair point. Yeah. All right, so uh, my next pick. Okay, uh, so it's a band that Molly has already talked about. It's uh, The Strokes. The Strokes is a set from 2001. I don't have the vinyl here right now. I do have the singles, like I have Hard to Explain on here. And Banger. I have uh, Someday. Banger. Yeah. Um, I like buying these singles because they're cool. Um, Those are cute. Yeah, I love I love the uh, I love their artwork. That's kind of like one of the things that kind of drew me into the band was like their aesthetic. Like mm -hmm. they were very retro. I guess I should say like at this point in my life, I again I was mostly listening to like hip hop and R and B, and then I would see their music videos like on MTV. And I was like, who are these guys? And then I just kind of went out on a limb, bought the CD, and I was blown away. I was like, wow, these are just like some cool white guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, these cool white guys, like from New York, um, very pretentious, very, um, You're like you know. rich kids from New yeah. York. Yeah. But they're so But good. the songs were so good. Yeah, this album was just like really important for me personally. They opened a door for, like in the grand scheme of things, they opened a door for a lot of bands. Um, 
So all the and all the bands that I really was listening to at the time, like Block Party, Arctic Monkeys, Interpol, and then bigger bands like The Killers and and Kings of Leon, like they benefited off this album because they really kind of started the whole they, wave. They made it like the sound. Yeah, yeah, because I think at the time, like on the radio or on on the on the channels, like on the music channels, it was mostly like Limp Bizkit at the time. <laughs> Yeah, Limp Bizkit, Corn, <laughs> Linkin Park, and like whatever. That's cool, but then these guys came and it kind of like paved the way for more successful bands, actually, which is which sucks for them. But they should be the most successful. I think yeah, that's important to see. They, they, they're like they're. Yeah. They're the best of the best. So they've had an interesting career. I was actually really torn between this and the new Abnormal. Like I really love that album, the new Abnormal. But this one, like I just. And I, I listened to it on every trip. Like I could remember, distinctly remember different road trips where I was playing this album. Even actually my first time in Scotland, like driving around in the mountain, like near the mountains and stuff. So it's just been my soundtrack for a lot of my different trips and just kind of like around that time. And as I said, they, they paved the way for all these other bands that I was really into. So I love the album. And I also love that they love them for like the, as the representation for, for that time. So. The Strokes is this it, and if I had to recommend two songs, oh. I mean, probably these two. <laughs> Someday and Hard to Explain, I think those two are my favorite songs on the album. I know they're the singles, um, but they they really are my favorite songs on the album. And my favorite Strokes songs of all time. Oh wow, so, of all time. It's, I, it's beg bangers, you, I beg so. you to listen to The Strokes. I beg you. Okay, so my next pick, I don't know. I don't know which number we're on anymore. But my next pick is uh, Moon Trip Radio by Clams Casino. Yes, very solid. Wow. The first time I heard of Clams Casino was you kept listening to I'm God mm -hmm. in the car. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that song. Wow. And I was like, what is this song? And then I just listened to it over and over and over and over yeah. again. It's one of I'm God by Clams Casino is easily in my top 10 songs of all time. <laughs> easily. After I'm God, um, Archie was like, oh, hey, we should listen to more Clams Casino then if you if you like them. Mm -hmm. um, and like I, Archie already mentioned, we're super into like ambient music. I love I love music that just creates a vibe. Yeah, an atmosphere. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ambient. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, this, this is, it's just, we listen to this one and it's just, it's really dark. The like, like the lows, like the bass and stuff, they're like, I just love like the way he like pitches stuff down and it, it just sounds so dark mm -hmm. and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love this album too. Like I wish I could have put it on my list, I'm sorry about but, um, that. But yeah, it's, it's an amazing piece of art. I think honestly, just like it's dark, but it's a great album for chilling out, a great album for driving at night. Yeah. I just think it's it's just absolutely amazing. It's um, it's definitely one of those like it's a and you can it's called Moon Trip Radio. Mm -hmm. So it just feels like you're on this trip to the moon, like the the way it's sequenced. Mm -hmm. It's it's very um, it feels very poignant, actually. Yeah. And, yeah, it does uh, feel poignant. It's like dark, but like yeah, the beats it's are kind just of sad. Yeah, yeah, melancholic. Yeah, but the beats are so good. They're so good. If I had to recommend two songs, they're all bangers. <laughs> um, but I would pick "Ruin" and "Glowing Bones." But I do Solid. think you should listen to the whole album. And if you listen to one song from Clams Casino, it should be "I'm God," masterpiece. I totally agreed. Totally agree. My next pick, I might actually get clowned for this one, but <laughs> I really don't care. Um, here it is. After Hours by The Weeknd. Uh, came out in 2020. And that's that's one of the major reasons why I picked this. Uh, honestly, I was really, it was really between this and House of Balloons. Like, man, House of Balloons. I feel like I was the first one there, bro. Like. <laughs> I knew the weekend before people knew the weekend. Like I remember when his when one of his songs kind of just leaked, 
and nobody knew who he was. His face was kind of hidden. He'd have these black and white photos that kind of, and I feel like he changed the face of R and B. Like I feel like him and Frank Ocean really changed the face of R and B. But this one in particular, I feel like it's a flawless album. I know some people might disagree. I know for some people it's too poppy, but. I think the production on here is is insane. I think uh, he's got, he got Metro Boomin on here, and basically he he did like a synth wave meets trap meets R and B. I've never heard anything like this before. Definitely gets poppy in the second half, but I like that shit. Like it's so good. A big reason as well is because it was kind of like. It was during the pandemic. It just reminds me of the pandemic, like going out for runs and kind of staying at home, ordering food and just like doing all sorts of stuff. And also, and also I'm a big fan of Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> it came out on the same day. Oh no, it came out on the it same day? It came out on the day? same day as- uh, Wow, Animal Crossing was a big part of the yeah. pandemic. And you know, we were talking on the phone a lot, yeah. obviously, and- we used to just talk on the phone and play Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah, and listen to The weekend. Like, yeah. yeah, I just, I don't know. I just love this album. It, it, it has a special place in my heart. And I, unlike other people, like Blinding Lights, I wasn't sick of it because I, I I wasn't really listening to the radio. It's not my favorite song on the album, but it still holds up in my opinion. I don't know. It's just a great album. Also, it's a different side of him. Like not, not too many drug references. Obviously, there's a couple here for sure but it's not heavy on the drugs, which is different. And it's, he's more vulnerable, I think, on this one. If you listen to this front to back, like the, the narrative, it's just well done. He has Tame Impala on here, who produced the song. He even got Max Martin, who he's worked with before, who's worked with like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. I just love this album. If I had to recommend two songs, Alone Again is probably top, top three songs for me. The Weeknd, Alone Again, and probably, Oh, Faith. I love Faith. That's the, that's the drug song, but <laughs> I just love, it's just very synth wavy. I don't know. I feel like this album was perfectly executed. I can't say enough good things about it. I don't care about the haters. <laughs> this is the shit right here. My next pick, I think everyone will have heard of the band. Um, I'm not sure about the whole album. Um, Unplugged in New York by Nirvana. Yeah, classic. I think it's a perfect album. Yeah. So I loved Nirvana as a teenager. They were one of my favorite bands. But I feel like this is like the best. This, like, it's my favorite album by them by far. I agree. Um, I feel the same way. Even like the songs, like the tracks on this that are on, because they have like some covers and stuff. Um, the tracks that are like from other albums, I think they're better on this. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, like I Dumb. Agree. Yeah. Dumb is one of my favorite Nirvana songs. And on this, it it's just, it's perfection. The strings are just amazing. Yeah, I just like, I've loved Nirvana since I was very young. And this just holds up. It's acoustic, all of it, obviously. Mm -hmm. So it's very laid back. It's very relaxed. He has a beautiful voice. It's just, just a fantastic album all around. Yeah. It just never gets old for me. This has been one of my favorites since I was maybe 14 or 15 years old. I just think it's such a great album. It just, it's just timeless. If I recommended two songs, absolutely dumb. Just absolutely perfect dumb on this album. I think a lot of people will know The Man Who Sold The World. That one was played a lot yeah. when I was younger, yeah. for sure. Yeah. It's a cover. I would pick Dumb and All Apologies. Mm. Um, I think if you don't listen to any Nirvana, you should listen to this. Yeah. It's honest, it's such a vibe. It's just, it just holds up so well. It's I actually, I, I completely agree with that statement because yeah. I'm not like a Nirvana fan at all, yeah. but this is just, yeah, yeah it's, perfect. it's perfect. It's It's a 10 record, yeah. to be honest. It really so. is. All the way through, yeah. there is not a single song in this that like flops. Right. It's just steady bangers. So just, just for uh, full disclosure, I think at this point I would have put Kanye Graduation. It's my favorite Kanye West album and it definitely deserves to be on this list. The only reason why I left it off is because we've done a reaction to it. Mm -hmm. So I've talked about it in great yeah, length. Yeah, talked about it at length. So um, if you want to know how I feel about Graduation, go watch our reaction. <laughs> um, but my next pick is another band that uh, we have in common mm -hmm. that uh, Molly talked about at great length and that's Radiohead. And this is 2008 um, in Rainbows. They have several amazing albums. Like they have an amazing discography. I feel like this one I just, I connect to the most. I remember when this came out, 
and this was the album where it was like pay what you want mm -hmm. so you go on their website and you could just click how much money you want to pay and of course i at the time i was i didn't have a job so i was just i got it for free <laughs> this is just uh i feel like this is a quintessential album it features i always say this is the best like three track run on oh, any album is. obviously like nude weird fishes and all i need those are like that stretch for just me just amazing yeah i was lucky enough to see them live perform a handful of these songs i want to say 2016 or 2017 one of those years it's just i don't know it's an amazing album it's it's appropriately titled in rainbows because i feel like it's a it's a very colorful album mm -hmm. compared to a lot of their music it's it does feel very colorful it's very like bright yeah and it's not i mean it's definitely some depressing songs on here <laughs> yeah but it's not as as um i don't know it's not as bleak as in other albums yeah and there's there's more songs about love on this one yeah. I, f I feel like compared to the others mm -hmm. maybe not as much as a maybe moon shaped pool i just um i have so many memories with this like you know back in the day before <laughs> before streaming like i would have my ipod shuffle and i would have i always update it with like my favorite songs and like this album was always in there so again it reminds me of a lot of trips i've taken something that we listen to all the time really and um, I'm not gonna lie, like when I first got into uh, watching reactions on YouTube, again, <laughs> that was during the pandemic. This was one of the albums I, I was like, I wanna see what people think. Like, this is definitely one of the albums that I wish I could hear for the first time. Maybe just Radiohead in general, I mm -hmm. wish I could hear I for the first wish, time. Because yeah. I'm kind of jealous when I see people react to... Uh, Especially with headphones and like yeah, sitting down to really experience. Right. Yeah. But uh, again, I mean, everybody knows about this album. So yeah. That's, that's my pick. It's a fantastic album. Yeah. That would have been my pick for Radiohead. Um, but then I stole it. Yeah, exactly. My next pick, I don't know how many people will know this. It's called Sanctuary and it's by Mount Fugitive. So I think it's a relatively small artist. Yes. Yeah. And you should listen to this immediately. It's like lo-fi. It's very relaxing. It's extremely relaxing. Yeah. My mom loves this album. I feel like he should be so much bigger. It's just a really lovely album. There's a lot of like guitar. Yeah. It's very kind of sunny. Like you can see the album cover. Pretty much what you see on this album yeah. cover is what it sounds That's like. That's the kind of vibe. Yeah. It's honestly, it's just such a beautiful album. I never get tired of this. And this is also special to me because it's an album we listen to together all the time. Mm -hmm. And we used to listen to, to it together all the time. The thing is, we used to we used to listen to music together on the phone, um, <laughs> and make like playlists and things. Um, and we listen to this all the time. So it has a very special place in my heart, and I just think it's so good. It's like really laid back, really sunny, really just so good. Sanctuary, Mount Fugitive. If I had to choose only two songs to recommend you should honestly just listen to the whole album you could pick any song from this album and you would be impressed by it but i'm gonna pick cherry blossom and reflection honestly just get up in the morning drink some coffee and listen to this album yeah it's it's an incredible it deserves so much more recognition i just love this album i'm gonna chime in a little bit yeah I because you, um, you love this album too yeah i know i feel bad that i didn't uh put this on my list so he's an icelandic dude actually mm -hmm. and he yeah like like she said he's not like super popular i think he only has like two thousand followers on yeah. instagram or something like this and um yeah i think to to the average person it's just like regular lo-fi hip-hop mm -hmm. but man this we it's just such a beautiful album it's just i feel like it's simple like the way he sampled is just pretty much loops and soft drums it's just uh very relaxing again something that i like to put on when i'm feeling overwhelmed or mm. but the the one thing i wanted to say was like i looked high and low for this damn <laughs> vinyl like out of our vinyl collection like this is the album that like you want i searched high and low yeah i uh i waited for the prices to become kind of reasonable it still was a little bit unreasonable when i bought it anyway like she said you gotta listen to this it's yeah. it's put in the background you don't even have to think it's, like it's super easy you yeah. don't have to think about it just put it on see how you like it yeah it's a great vibe so we're down to our last two albums and i'm going to talk about my favorite hip-hop album actually and uh as cliche as it is it's um it's not as illmatic from 1994 i didn't get into it until 2000 because at the time i was listening to a lot of um just whatever was on the radio like there was no there was no streaming before there was no uh i mean there was internet for sure but i didn't have a smartphone i just remember like 
I remember I used to go to church as a kid and just trade CDs with my cousin. So like every Sunday we would trade CDs and that's how I discovered music. I, I first heard of Nas like when he put out that single, If I Ruled the World. So that was on his second album. And it wasn't until I went to high school and I met my friend Deepak. Uh, shout out to Deepak. He, he put me on to like, he put me on to some good shit. And he was like, yeah, you got to listen to the real shit. You got to listen to Illmatic. So he put me on to Illmatic. And this is before I knew anything about like critical acclaim or five mics on the source make it and the source magazine or like all of this stuff like i just genuinely genuinely love this album and in my mind this became it was kind of like a gift and a curse because like this for me is kind of like the blueprint for how a how an album should sound like how a hip-hop album should sound like this is the way the beats are supposed to sound this is the way you're supposed to rap it's supposed to be this long i can't stand like these 24 <laughs> song albums i can go on and on about this album we're eventually going to cover this so mm -hmm. i mean i'll go more into detail but this was like for me as the blueprint this was the first album i think that like gathered a bunch of like top-notch producers like the top producers in the game and put them all in one album like before this a lot of hip-hop albums had like one producer like an in-house producer or or whatever but this one had like dj Premier, pete rock i can go on and on about this album if i had to only recommend two songs i mean it would have to be new york state of mind and i mean it's kind of cliche again it would be new york state of mind and the world is yours but i mean the whole album is a classic i know everybody knows that but yeah very special place in my heart it's an album that i still play today even though it came out in 1994 so yeah now okay my next pick we were going to get the vinyl. We don't have it. We were going to buy it when we were in Paris in October, but we were scared it wouldn't fit in our suitcase. Oh, okay, yeah. So my next pick is from a French musician called Christine and the Queens. It is their debut album uh, in 2014, which is called Chaleur Humaine. First time I heard it was 2016. Okay. When I was living in France, just before I moved to Spain. And I was like, holy shit, how have I never heard this before? <laughs> I listened to a few songs and then I listened to all of it and I was completely obsessed with it. I used to listen to it every single day yeah. on repeat. I used to listen to it, I remember, on the bus on the way to work every morning in Valencia. It's just such a good album. They are such, like, they are so talented. Mm -hmm. I think if they were fully English speaking, they would be like one of the biggest yeah. pop stars. Oh, totally. They're, I guess they're kind of influenced by like Michael Jackson, yeah, but sure. like just like perfect pop mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. just absolutely incredible. So talented. The lyrics are like, so they're like, there's a lot of like metaphors, but they're like very touching. If I were to recommend um, two songs. So there is an English song on the album um, called Narcissus is Back. That is one of my all time favorite songs from them. Wow. But the original is in English, um, so it sounds great. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I'll write it on the screen, just in case you don't speak French. I would recommend uh, Nuit 17 à 52. That is just such a beautiful song. It's heartbreaking. It's just beautiful. Mm. So I would recommend Narcissus is Back and Nuit 17 à 52. Merci. <laughs> so we both have one album left each. Um, I was going to mention a couple of uh, honorable mentions before we unveil mm -hmm. the last one. Um, as I said, I grew up listening to a lot of R&B and, and hip hop uh, in the 90s. So I just wanted to pick one album to represent that. It could have been Usher, it could have been <laughs> Michael Jackson, it could have been TLC, but I went with Mariah Carey. <laughs> I, was Mar yeah, I went with Mariah Carey, her album called Butterfly. Hey man. Don't hate. <laughs> Not hating. Mariah Carey Butterfly, released in 1997. Just do yourselves a favor. Listen, like, there's a four-track run there from, like, I think it's Breakdown. Breakdown, The Roof, Fourth of July, and um, Baby Doll. I still listen to this oh, album. Baby Doll. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, I still listen to that album today. I kind of skip around the ballads, but you guys, you guys got to listen to that. <laughs> um, another album from 1997. Uh, Homogenic by Bjork. Just an amazing album, super creative. As I mentioned, Kanye graduation would have been on this list, but mm -hmm. uh, I've talked about it at length. So we'll go watch our reaction. And then the other honorable mention is NERD In Search Of, which is their debut album in 2001. Honorable mentions from me. I was going to do music for nine postcards, which Archie already mentioned. I would also have um, 
Birth of a New Day. Birth of a New Day. So I've just found out that the English title <laughs> is Birth of a New Day. It's not normally in English, so it's by 2014. This is immaculate. Um, it's like... It's pretty much what you see on the cover. It's as well. literally exactly what you see yeah. on the cover. It's such a vibe. It's like ambient. It's like kind of like cyberpunk, synth wavy, just like just imagine uh, a city at night. Blade it's, Runner. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fantastic album. So, 2014, birth of a new day. Apparently, I, I didn't know that until now. Um, <laughs> so good. And I would give an honorable mention to a fever you can't sweat out. <laughs> by Panic at the Disco. Okay. <laughs> I'll explain when I get to my next pick. Okay. Why don't you get to your next pick? Okay. My final pick is a wild card. It is Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge by My Chemical Romance. Wow. Wow. Don't have the vinyl, unfortunately. I know I said The Strokes were my first favorite band. Um, I see those, they were the first band I was like obsessed with. But My Chemical Romance were kind of like the first band I like connected to. Like I had heard music obviously on the radio. Nothing really like hit me until My Chemical Romance. Um, so I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> I was 11 listening to My Chemical Romance. And again, I have my brother to thank for it. He introduced me to the Black Parade first. And I had just never heard music like that before. So. Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge is my favorite album by them. I still listen to it, as you may know. I think that they, they were so important in my life, um, like shaping me as a person, as an emo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously nobody knows this, but I used to be a massive emo when I was a teenager, from like 11 to 14. Wow. Um, so yeah, that was like, they really influenced, they shaped my music taste because um, Calm introduced me to the Black Parade, and then from there I liked Paramore. Paramore mm. were my next like favorite band. Yeah, I don't mind Paramore. Paramore's great. They just really shaped shaped my music taste, shaped me as a person. I got into all other kinds of like bands from there. Like I just mentioned, Panic at the Disco, a yeah. favorite you can't sweat. I only wanted to include one album from my dark past. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think honestly, I know that a lot of it is because of it has like nostalgic value for me. I think there are so many bangers on that album. I love it. It's yeah. if it weren't for my chemical romance, I would just be a totally different person mm. to who I am today. Wow. It shaped me. It like like from there I lived so many like experiences. Like my whole life was shaped by that and now the music I like, I guess, evolved from when I was an early teenager. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, shout out to My Chemical Romance for wow. for making me who I am today. I know nobody is going to listen to it, even <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. If I did recommend two songs, I would recommend Thank You for the Venom, which is my favorite My Chemical Romance song. And um, it's not a fashion statement. It's a death wish. I guess I'll show you guys my last pick um, from 2015, Currents by Tame Impala. A lot of you are probably familiar with this album. It's just an amazing album. Molly, did you know Tame Impala is one guy <laughs> by the name of Kevin Parker? The funny thing about that is when we first became friends and you mentioned Tame Impala, I was like, fuck. Do I say they or he? It's just a flawless record. It's different from his first two albums, which were like psychedelic rock. This one, he kind of replaced the guitars with synths. And there's just so many elements from, like there's R&B elements, there's hip hop elements. There's um, obviously a lot of electronica, a lot of electronic, but the way he mixes and masters everything, like you listen to this on headphones, it's gonna blow your mind. His lyrics are amazing, his voice, is amazing everything is amazing and it's just something that like you know you know me like i love my r&b i like my spacey sounds mm -hmm. and this has elements of both yeah. i've seen them live three times um just get better each time it's he's just, a talented guy like, yeah multi-talented it's a it's a flawless album yeah we, we've actually like you're familiar with this album yeah pretty much so we we reacted to uh or Mol, molly reacted to 
the slow rush. We put it together. We haven't uploaded it, and I'll explain why in the video. But um, okay. so if you guys want the slow rush, we'll we'll put it up. Yeah. Even though everybody knows this album, the two al the two songs I would recommend probably probably new person same old mistakes. And I really like yes I'm changing. So oh no I also like eventually. <laughs> Let's change that to new person same old mistakes and eventually those are the two songs that I would recommend. So yeah I guess that concludes our. Um, our lengthy discussion about our favorite <laughs> albums. We'll try and cut this down. If you guys like this kind of video, or we're just kind of talking about music, we'll try and do. We'll try and be. Uh, I don't know. What yeah. I'm trying to the say. thing is, we we connected over music, and we we love. We both yeah. love music. We love talking about it. So, like literally anything related to music, we would love to do. Also, let us know your favorites again. Like yeah. 11 favorites. They don't have to be your all-time favorites. Just 11 albums that mean something to you. Feel free to explain why. Anything like that. Yeah. Um, and now you know what I listen to. You know what not to tell me to react to. And it has been speculated that I only listen to top 40 music. So now you know <laughs> that to not be true. <laughs> I guess at this point, we want to say thanks for watching. Yeah, like, thank you so much. We started just a few months ago. We're a relatively small channel. Mm -hmm. We're just like two introverts who like <laughs> trust me like we never imagined we'd be in front of camera the camera and never. like upload ourselves on youtube like we hate looking at ourselves yeah but like uh we really like music we like talking about music i like sharing the music that i like with molly and vice versa and uh like we're not trying to be experts or anything here we just, just we like, just love music yeah so. And we like sharing it with you. Like I, I love like people obviously leave their recommendations, but people also leave comments about like the albums, like the albums I've reacted to, like what they mean to them or how they impacted them or how they helped them through a difficult situation. And I think that's so nice. Yeah. Um, so I do. I love hearing like from you guys. You guys are amazing. Like yeah. you guys really breathe life into this channel. Yeah. Again, I had like zero expectations. Like we just. Yeah, we didn't think anyone would watch these. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. 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 So thanks, thanks for guys. being great. Thanks for the yeah. support. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll spoil it for you guys. Next week we got JPEG Mafia veteran. <laughs> yeah. And following that, I mean, it, we, we put up a poll. It looks like Travis Scott's gonna win. So yeah. Travis Scott after that. Yeah. So. We'll and we're gonna to do that. everything else. Like there's so much to cover. We'd want to do more videos like this. So like I said before, if you want like a hip hop version, like my top hip hop albums. And uh, we have so many ideas, like yeah. not just reactions, but we have other ideas. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe if uh, you guys enjoyed this. And um, yeah. we'll see you next time. See you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.